and Mr. Rupesh Nair, Senior Divisional Director, Rolta to give a presentation on Roadmap to Operational Excellence. Anindya Chatterjee, Divisional Director, Process Industry Group Rolta, has over 18 years of experience in the hydrocarbon industry and is a certified reliability engineer. <coughs> he has worked with renowned companies such as Sabic, Reliance, and Nalco. Mr. Rupesh Nair, Senior Divisional Director, Product Development, Rolta. He holds several patents in XML technologies. Previously, he was with Oracle Corporation as Director for Oracle ERP Development. He has rich work experience, lying with companies like Sabic, Reliance, and Nalco. He has done his BE and is a postgraduate from IIM Bangalore. I would request both of them to come on the stage. Hello? Hello? Okay. Good afternoon. I think after a tea break, I think we have charged again. I know from the morning we had a good overdose of information. Uh, see, the idea what uh, we want to present, me and Rupesh, uh, we are taking uh, jointly this uh, session. Uh, we would like to really uh, concentrate a bit on the practical side of implementing the operational excellence. What are the challenges? How those challenges can be overcome? And that has been the plan that we put up as roadmap for achieving the operational excellence. So this is the agenda. The, we will go through a perspective what we have really discussed since yesterday, the approach, what is the landscape of that kind of a uh, setup, what is the methodology that we propose, the architecture, and the value prop and question hour if uh, time permits. Okay. Coming to the perspective, now what is excellence? The excellence model rests on the three major pillars of the organization. The culture, the discovery for the new opportunities, and the continuous change process. This has been discussed uh, by uh, many speakers while the, mm, during their discussions. Opening up the new opportunities. It is actually unlimited ability to improve and attain a high scale. Uh, by the PAT relay, Excellence is a gradual result of always striving to do better. Now, the implementation of the change is heavily dependent on technology today. And technology is giving us variety of options that we have been discussing. Thanks to the thought leaders. Okay, uh, sorry. Thanks to the thought leaders in the room and the cumulative experience that we have who are banging on the innovation, modernization, and revolution from our technology perspective. I am sure it will open up a new dimension in the thought process of the leaders and champions of the industry today here in the small room. And we will go enriched with the ideas and thoughts to carry on in the practical life. Coming to uh, the overall operational excellence success, if we see the success rate has always been a problem. I think this mic is not working. The success rate has always been a problem. Overall effectiveness is only 25 to 35%, while there are not achieved is 65 to 75%. Can you correct this mic, please? I think let's proceed. 
Now, reasons for the failures has been resistance from the employees, the resistance from the management, the resistance from the resources that we don't have, and many other reasons that actually has not been able to give us the right success that we have been expecting. What has been the barriers? If we see the participation of the employees, the management sponsorship, the overall resource constraints within the organization, and as well as the general issues like the goals, objectives, benchmarks not defined, this has been the major barriers that has not allowed the operational excellence to take the shape that we really uh, planned for. What has been the challenges? The major challenges were the visibility, so we didn't have the proper visibility of what exactly is happening in different fun functions within the organization, the empowerment of the people, the decision makers are limited who are taking uh, decisions from a very high level perspective. The people who are in the rank and file within the organization, they are not participating in the overall decision making process. The response time for the decision making has always been quite uh, wanted. It can be improved quite a lot. The agility in the decision making, the alignment within the organizations has been pr a problem. The multiple processes, multiple systems, uh, how the overall interaction happens has been an issue. The knowledge management, yeah, we always bring a lot of knowledge within the organization based on the experience, but how we manage, how we dissipate that across the organization has been an issue. The strategy management, so the strategies are developed in the top of the organization, how they are percolated up to the bottom layer of the organization. That has been an issue. The data accuracy, I think many people have mentioned uh, about garbage in, garbage out issues. Now, when we have all the data, all the information in the different silos of the organization, uh, the accuracy of the data has always been questioned. So the reports or the decisions has never been accurate to the level we wanted. The root cause analysis is an issue because we don't have all the critical information to do the analysis and exploiting the new opportunities of improvement or what we call the innovation part so that the innovative ideas and attitudes within the organization can be inculcated a lot. So what should have been the approach to bring all of these requirements into a single purpose uh, solution which will provide a collaborative performance management system where all of this will be tackled together. But why? What is the motivation behind the whole uh, purpose? Is to bring the safety, the quality, the sustainability, and profitability from a single platform. Drive it from a single platform to get the best results out of it. I know in every organization, there are a lot of efforts around safety, around quality, profitability, and sustainability, but how they are being tackled together is a critical issue. Uh, now, when we talk about actual implementation, we talked about the culture. Now, culture is a very critical uh, part of the whole process. If you see here, from the bottommost layer, this is the reacting, the anticipating, collaborating, and orchestrating. These are the three levels of improvement from a culture perspective. While from a technology or data perspective, it is data which is actually captured within the organization, different silos uh, or different applications. Then on top of that information, which actually gives the knowledge and the wisdom. Now when we actually bring these two together, that is the model or a practical model to bring the excellence in the real uh, practical life. Now, when we want to actually move in that direction, the overall maturity process moves like this, where we have a immature paper laden process to a maturing in the right direction process, and the analytics. Analytics has been discussed quite a lot. We will go in deeper on the analytics side a bit. Now, we, when we actually do this progression, we move from unaware, so wherever the systems are still in the reacting mode from a culture or in a data stage, we are in a state of unaware to a tactical decision making to focus strategic or pervasive. It depends on our organization, the maturity within the organization where they stand to really move up on this curve. 
if you see the prevailing many of the organizations, they still have different uh, functions which are actually reporting to the CEO or CX of the organization, which is the executive management position, and the channel of information flow is disintegrated. So what we are really proposing, that we build a complete integrated approach and the operational excellence platform should actually drive the information and provide to everybody to achieve single version of truth, what I think has been discussed also quite a lot. The advantage of this particular integrated approach is even you can bring in the partners, the people who are in the finance, the marketing, the customer, all into one network through a pervasive BI implementation process. Let's see what is the landscape for that kind of a uh, process. If you see, this is the real-time data where the ERP or different hist historian systems are actually keeping this information. On top of that, we should provide the real-time intelligence. Then comes the performance management where the key performance indicators for different functions can be uh, captured then the performance analytics, where the scenario analysis or different uh, simulation-based, model-based analysis can be done, and then the strategy management, where the goals, objectives of the organizations are actually defined. The idea here is to build an integrated platform which will tackle all of these four layers on sitting on top of whatever real-time or transactional data we are having. This will help the organization to provide the information starting from the engineers, the supervisors, line managers, functional specialists, and executive management, the whole of the data from a single platform. This is a holistic approach, and it provides a pervasive business intelligence, and seamless integration between data, information, and knowledge, which we discussed earlier. Let me elaborate this with a case. I think this is quite familiar to everybody. This is just a tank with a pump. And if we see, this is a real-time data, which is a 2.5 meter here. And these are some of the real-time data which we can see from the DCS panel or any historian systems. When we talk about real-time intelligence, it's a bit processed information for tactical decision-making, where it comes time to empty, allege, or pumpable product, or this kind of processed information. When we go to a next level of information, which is about performance management, then we see average tank level, average availability, inventory turns, this kind of key performance indicators. When we go a bit higher on the whole strata, which is by analytics, we can find what has been the demand growth, what has been the average shortage, or whatever uh, analysis requirements are. Then comes the strategy management that should we build a new tank or we should redistribute the inventory in that. Uh, one thing is interesting uh, here, the, all these decisions are dependent on this 2.5 meter data, but put up in a different context for a different purpose at a different level of the organization to take different level of decisions. So just going back a bit here, sorry. So this is the landscape that has to actually come into action in the practical world to really provide the overall operational excellence where it can be a single version of truth. The idea here is the person who is really taking the decision on the top he can drill down to this level of the data without any intervention of uh, IT or any uh, more knowledgeable person from that perspective, or this data can go up like this. So this is a seamless framework to bring the operational excellence from a practical perspective. Okay, I think we uh, discussed in the morning about this. This is a very interesting part to understand. I think we, on our every day-to-day uh, -day life, we know that when we take decisions, part of the information we have, part of the decision discussion, uh, part of the information we assume, and part comes from our uh, knowledge and experience. 
and that actually frames our decision. Uh, now, more information we have, more accurate will be our decision. I think that's, uh, that's obvious. So the information what we generally use for decision making is what we know, which is a part of it. What we know, we don't know. So that's still good. We know that we don't know, so we can assume well. But there is a major part of the information what we don't know that we don't know. And this is the risk. Uh, in the earlier uh, session, we were discussing about change management. And this is the major part of the risk that any organization carries when they really go for any improvement or change process. Now, how to really tackle that? The direction is to really bring in business intelligence to really provide the cross-functional visibility of the information in a meaningful way. Now, how that actually uh, aligns with the maturity model? If we see here, when we move from data to information to knowledge, what we exactly move on the curve side, as Andy was uh, referring yesterday, the, we move on this particular curve from raw data to ultimately to optimization. So optimization is something like which actually provides the best intelligence uh, to take the decisions. Uh, how to manage so that the, we can sustain with the best performance. What it brings is, at this level when we are, we can say what happened. We really mature to a, with a analysis, we know why it happened. But then when we go to the analysis, we get how we happened. But still, when we go a step ahead, then we know can we forecast or can we predict a failure? And then can we take a preventive action to really avoid that failure in a proactive way? So that has been the uh, overall program for the insight. And this is the business transformation process. Hand in hand with the culture, with the data and technology together. So the broad vision that we propose is this is the plan get all the informations from here through a single connection to a system, and that gives you the, all the informations. Break all the barriers, break all the ecosystems, or smaller or shorter ecosystems of the information within the organization, and bring it into one platform. We'll try to demonstrate a bit how it actually happens. Now, we have seen a dashboard there which is just tip of the iceberg. How to get into that dash dashboard is the critical part of it. Now, there are different steps for that. I, I am sure uh, you all are uh, practicing all this, that where you have to set the requirement, you have to define all the key performance indicators, you have to understand what is the practices, what are the data models that will uh, actually help you to achieve that. You have to build the whole system, you have to build the infrastructure, uh, whether you do it in cloud or whether you do it with your own hardware, you have to build, you have to buy a lot of applications. Uh, you have to define everything that what is good, what is bad across the organization. Uh, define all the strategic goals, define all the objectives, targets for each of the organization. Then implement the whole system and that actually is the bottom part of the iceberg. Now this is what ac exactly Rolta has designed, which is the Rolta One View, which actually provides the comprehensive view, started from develop the whole uh, architecture for it, provide all the key performance indicators for different verticals, and also implement the system, assist you in implementing that system so that we can see these dashboards which really makes meaningful uh, information for you. I'll just go into a key elements. So in our operational excellence uh, overall view, this should be the major elements like operation insights, asset insights, HAC, uh, sustainability, supply chain, projects, and definitely HR, marketing, trading, benchmarking, these are uh, also quite uh, required. And this should be the overall structure for that. I will just take you through our practical examples to uh, elaborate that. This is uh, from uh, asset side. Now, you, if you see this dashboard, you can see here, this information is coming from where this asset is, how is this asset actually uh, bought, where from, what is the manufacturer details, 
what happened to this whole asset? Now here, if you can see whether you are doing preventive maintenance, the breakdown maintenance, the corrective maintenance, you are doing a management of change, the machine has stripped, all kinds of events, what has been logged in for this particular asset over the last 10 years, you want to see on a time frame first. Then I know exactly what actually has been happening for that asset. Then you have, yeah, then you have all the cost breakers for that, what kind of cost has been incurred, what has been the life cycle cost for this, what is the acquired cost or life cycle analysis. We have been discussing last yesterday about modernization of the equipments. The most of the modernization depends on this kind of uh, analysis. And then what kind of strategy implementation you are doing, that when you are taking a strategy, whether that is giving you benefit or not, that analysis you can do from here. Now when we come to a historian side, first we want to see what exactly has been this equipment designed for. Like these are the design information for it. So whatever de design data or information you are having, first they are coming here. Then it is coming, what is the current operating? This will be coming for different historian systems what you are practicing. So what happens, you have the rated capacities and the current capacities which are in two different systems altogether are coming to you on a single frame. That provides the first, because most of the reliability failures, as we all know, are uh, because of sweating of the equipments beyond its capacity. Now how to really uh, work proactively is to really avoid those sweating beyond or going beyond their uh, windows of design. So this is the first stage where we should uh, try to work on to bring all these informations together. Then how it is being operated from a run days, from a compliance, from a uh, vibration side, from a damage, or if you are practicing all the reliability practices like Webull analysis, then the characteristic life, shape factor, and everything comes from one particular platform. If we want to go in detail, let's say I am seeing the vibration is high, so I just click on here and I get into the detail of what has been the trend of the vibrations for that. If I go into uh, PM compliance and see why the PM compliance is not coming up to the mark, I click on that on a drill down and I understand that what has been the orders and how they are being complied and why they have not been complied. If we go to a level that I want to see where this equipment is, then it searches for me in your engineering systems, uh, engineering drawings or 3D models if you're having, then it provides that where this equipment is actually positioned. If you want to go into the uh, general assembly drawing or a detail drawing or a PNID, directly you get it from here. This is what we call information democracy. So if I am a person who is responsible for the asset, I have to take any decisions about that asset, then I have all the informations, whether they are come from your ERP systems, with your vibration monitoring systems, or your uh, engineering systems, or operating historian systems, all are actually put into a single framework. You want to see uh, for the geographically separated assets this on a GIS framework. Then you know exactly on a where this equipment is lying. Now this is from our individual asset perspective, but I want to know from our overall unit level the asset utilization. Then I get the complete asset utilization here and what kind of losses actually is affecting my overall performance. I can see here what kind of uh, uh, losses I am incurring on a day-to-day -day basis. If I want to get into the corrosion for that loop, I can get in here and it provides me the whole detail of it. When I go from a planned view, I am going up in the hierarchy of the information. So what I am seeing here is a comprehensive view of how this overall plant is operating from uh, utilization, budget, the on-stream factor, the cost, the compliance, the inspection compliance from a all perspective. And here you can see what has been the failures or worst actors that is actually affecting my all these key performance indicators in a uh, system has all the algorithms to find out which of the equipments that is really hurting your purpose. This is from a multi uh, facility side. Then you see here which are the plants 
we, how they are operated, and what has been the issues from that particular plant. So this gives you a comprehensive view of how our overall asset performance or asset information management should be collated into one platform. Uh, going to the next level of the hierarchy when we discussed, which is the analytics, this is a, just a sample for a scenario analysis. Now you have this information, you want to see that if I do something, some change, how it will impact my other parameters. If you see here, this is just a, a case where uh, some of the uh, crude to be purchased is being actually decided. When we see here, I am changing all this and I am getting uh, immediately a uh, uh, results of what changes I have done and how it is impacting my overall program. Coming to the next level where we call strategy management. Now they all are linked on top of uh, each other. Now when we see the strategy management, most of the organizations, they have a annual plan, they have annual targets, annual programs. But how that is mattering to my regular key performance indicators, how they are connected. If I am not being able to perform for some reason, which are the key performance indicators are really getting affected. So this provides a comprehensive platform where you first define the highest level goals. Then you have the strategic objectives. And when you drill on that, all the key performance indicators within the organization are connected to one of the strategic objectives. It is none of the key performance indicators are just hanging loose because just I have to measure because my boss asked me, so I am measuring. It is not the purpose of operational excellence side. So we, we connect all those key performance indicators and whatever dashboards comes in, you can drill on top of it to go into detail of that. And that can be done by anybody within the organization based on the authorities and checks and balances what is exactly designed in the system. This is actually providing, you can see here, the how the whole key performance indicators are managed. Then this gives you a complete view of the how a balanced scorecard is performing for you. These are the four major uh, perspectives against which the key performance indicators are managed. Uh, learning and growth. I can read from here. organization. So when we develop these strategic objectives and link them with a uh, specific information flow, we will be able to see that which is my weak link in the organization which is affecting the performance. Because as we all know that we cannot uh, perform as an individual. It's a whole team that is performing and if there is a weak link and if you can strengthen that weak link, many other uh, performance indicators will really improve. This gives a tree structure of it, where it shows like a fishbone diagram that which are the areas I need to improve so that I can really uh, give the desired performance. So this is how the whole uh, four scapes of the whole information structure is managed. Now to get to this level, we have a lot of expectations from the technology side how we can make it happen. So we need a system which can integrate with all the applications within the organization. It can achieve the single version of truth, align the performance with the strategic objectives, timely knowledge dissemination. This is very critical from a knowledge management perspective. Provides the mobility so that we can, we can get this information where we want. May not be within the plant only. The seamless collaboration, which can provide across the team, the actionable intelligence. The intelligence is there always. We have reports. We know what we want to do. But how, how much it is actionable or how much close it is uh, so that it guides me what direction I should take. And the governance and audit security compliance. Thank you. I think uh, I will give it to Rupesh to carry on for the next part. Thank you, Anindya. Can you hear me? Um, 
Anindya has made my life easy actually. So he has covered almost all the requirements for me. So now it's my part to deliver in terms of technology. Uh, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So uh, bear with me. So once again, we are looking at the same set of requirements and IT keeps struggling to meet this business requirements. Uh, business user is always remaining unsatisfied. So he expects more from the system, but what IT can deliver is unless the requirements are clear,